Hey guys, happy new year. I'm so glad to be back. I know I've been away for a little while since the holidays, just taking some time off to be with my family, but I'm so happy to be back and I'm really excited to kick off the new year with some dupes. And these aren't just your typical dupes. I feel like these are even better than the high-end version. Drugstore is really, really killing it this year. And I feel like dupes have become a thing. A lot of drugstore brands already this year seem to be duping high-end products more and more these days. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so first let's talk about this new foundation from Makeup by Mario. This is the Surreal Skin Foundation. I talked about this in a previous video. I wasn't super crazy about it. I felt like it was a little bit too glowy for me, but recently I tried a drugstore formula that is so similar to this, but without all the sparkle, and that is the Revlon Illuminance skin caring foundation. So the Revlon retails for $17.99 for one fluid ounce. The Mario Surreal Skin is $42 for one fluid ounce. And both formulas claim to have medium coverage and a luminous finish. Both of them have squalane in the formula, but in the Revlon, it's the fifth ingredient. And in the Mario, it's actually the 21st ingredient. So there's a lot more of it in the Revlon. The Mario comes in 30 shades and the Revlon has 28. So I feel like drugstore shade range are definitely getting a lot better and both formulas have more of a light to medium coverage I needed to build them both up on my cheeks where I have sunspots and also to hide redness on and around my nose and neither one of them completely covered those areas on the second coat so that's just something that you have to live with if you want to try either of these foundations it's a very light to medium type of coverage and I felt like these look so incredibly close on the skin but the one thing that I really love about the Revlon that I don't like about the Mars Mario is that the Mario foundation has some mica in the formula and when you go outside in the sunlight it can look sparkly and a little bit more glittery. And I think that the Mario one just really seems to highlight pores or any kind of texture on my face, while the Revlon one looks a lot smoother, but it still has that somewhat luminous finish to it. Now, I'm not a huge fan of glowy foundations either way, but even though the Revlon one is a little bit glowy, I still don't feel like it really highlights all of the imperfections in my skin like the Mario one does. So I definitely prefer this one, but they are so similar in terms of how they feel, how they cover on the skin, and both of them have a really very natural skin-like finish, which I love. The next product I wanted to talk about is the Benefit Fluff Up Brow Wax. So I feel like more and more of this type of formula are coming out, and I can't say that Milani really was trying to dupe Benefit because they literally came out at the same time, but it just seems to be a trend right now that makeup brands are doing to have this more fluffy brow look. So the Benefit one is $26 and the Milani is $10.99, and both of them claim to give you the more fluffy, feathery brow look. The Milani one claims to have have a 16 hour hold and the Benefit claims a 12 hour hold. Both of them have very similar brushes and both contain shea butter and have like a white creamy texture that turns clear as you brush it into your brows. The formula is definitely a lot lighter and drier than other brow gels. So when you're combing this through, it doesn't leave your brows looking wet. They sort of retain that fluffy look. And the one thing that I noticed about the Benefit compared to the Milani was that it didn't distribute as much of the product through my brows. I felt like I had to keep using this one over and over again whereas the Milani one, the product just went right into my brows and it does leave a little bit of white cast, but as you comb it through, the white disappears. So you just have to kind of comb it through a few times and that'll go away. But another big difference between these two is that I felt like the Milani actually held my brows up longer throughout the day. The Benefit one, I actually looked in the mirror about an hour after applying and my brow was already starting to droop. And my brow hairs naturally want to grow downward, so I have to use something with a stronger hold just to keep them up all day. And I felt like the Milani one did a really good job with that, and the benefit definitely didn't last as long. So I think if you're looking for something that's going to hold a little bit better, I would definitely go with the Milani. Again, I also felt like it was just easier to use because the brush distributed the product a lot more easily. 
Next up, e.l.f. has released a new lipstick. This is called the O Face Lipstick. It's $9, and it reminded me so much of the NARS Audacious lipsticks, and these retail for $34, so they're a lot more expensive. And when I looked at these two side by side, I actually thought e.l.f.'s packaging was a little bit nicer. The NARS come in sleek black packaging, but it's more of a smooth plastic, and the e.l.f. actually has the soft touch rubberized feel, which normally NARS products have. It feels a lot like the cases that they're blushes come in and then when you open them up the bullets are actually the exact same shape and they both have the brand logo embossed into the front of the lipstick as you twist it up which I thought was really cool. Both of them also claim to give one swipe coverage and a weightless creamy texture with a satin finish. Even the name O-Face from e.l.f. I feel is very reminiscent of the overtly sexual names that NARS often has. And another thing that I thought was similar about the packaging, when you go to take the cap and put it back on the NARS lipstick, if you try to put it on the wrong way, it won't close, the magnets repel each other, and then it'll just kind of snap back into place. And the e.l.f. one does the exact same thing. If I try to put it on backwards, it won't close and then I just let it go and it just snaps back just like the NARS. So I thought that was really interesting. It's literally the same experience using these. And the same thing with actually the application process. The other day I actually applied the shade Anna from NARS on one side of my lips and the e.l.f. in Effortless on the other side and they felt identical going on. Both of them had tons of pigmentation. They had the same weightless creamy feel and both of them also wore exactly the same throughout the day. They're they're not transfer proof, but they're long lasting enough because they kind of leave a stain behind on your lips. And that stain for me it lasted through eating and drinking. It faded very evenly on both sides of my lips. I didn't feel like one side got patchy before the other did. So I was really impressed with the e.l.f. lipstick. I actually felt like I was using the NARS one and I even liked the packaging a little bit better. It just has a more luxurious feel to it. Now I know that $9 is kind of steep for an e.l.f. lipstick. Usually I think they're in the five to six dollar range but this lipstick is definitely above and beyond anything else I've used from elf in the past like their old satin lipsticks that they have this is just on another level both in terms of the packaging just the overall experience of using and the formula is identical to a $34 formula both in the way that it applies and the way that it lasts you could buy three of these for the price of NARS actually almost four of them so I still feel like you're getting an amazing deal Another foundation that I just tried recently is the NYX Bear With Me Blur Foundation. And the first time I tried it, it reminded me so, so much of the Tarte Shape Tape Cloud Coverage. And looking at the two packages, I almost feel like they were maybe trying to dupe this one just because they're the same colors. I don't know, maybe not, but these formulas feel almost identical. So looking at the two side by side, the Tarte Cloud Cover is $39 and comes in 21 shades. The NYX is $14 and comes in 24 shades. Both of them claim to be a medium coverage and a weightless cloud-like moussey feel. Both also claim to have a natural matte finish and the Tarte one claims 24 hours of hydration while the NYX claims 12 hours of hydration. Both of them say that they have a blurring filter-like finish. They're supposed to minimize your pores, fine lines, and texture. Now, I don't really love the matte powdery feel of either one of these, to be honest with you, having dry skin, but I do think that the NYX formula sat more naturally on my skin, and I felt like the Tarte one just looked a little bit dehydrated compared to the NYX, and the NYX, while it didn't look dewy, I did feel like it just looked more hydrated, I guess. I don't know. I just liked the look of it a lot better than I did the Tarte. This one, I know a lot of people love this formula, so if you do, I think you'll really, really enjoy the NYX, but if you have more dry skin like I do, and you were expecting something like the Bear With Me Concealer, because this is part of the same line, this is definitely more drying. I felt like that concealer was one of the most hydrating and emollient concealers I've ever tried. I was expecting another product in the Bear With Me line to be more like that, and this is definitely one of those weight kind of moussey foundations that typically has more of a matte finish. But that being said, I don't feel like it's super dry. 
if I exfoliate and moisturize my skin really well, I feel like this looks fine. So if you are a fan of formulas like the Tarte Cloud Coverage, I think you will really, really love this because they feel almost identical. I think the NYX one is even better. Moving on, we have the new L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail with this because I did a whole entire video on this one mascara. So I'll be sure to link that down below if you'd like to check out that video. But when I was using this, it reminded me so much of the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. So the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift is $14.99 and the Charlotte Tilbury is $29 for the full size. And both of these have a very similar style brush that's flat on one side. And then when you flip it over, the other side is narrow with bristles to kind of comb through the lashes. The Charlotte Tilbury brush is a slightly different shape, but they're exactly the same concept. Even now, if I look at the claims on the website, the Charlotte Tilbury one says it has a load comb and lift brush and the L'Oreal says it has a load and lift brush. So sounds kind of familiar, right? Even if you actually read through the descriptions on how to use each one, they sound identical. Identical. So in this case, I actually prefer the L'Oreal mascara when I was using the Charlotte Tilbury I felt like it was a drier formula But it was also kind of a little sticky and it made my lashes clump together a bit more Especially when I flipped the brush over and tried to comb through my lashes They didn't comb out quite as well and the L'Oreal one is definitely a wetter formula and has the potential to get clumpier So you do have to make sure you comb it out quickly because it dries so so fast but because it dries down all the way, it leaves my lashes feeling super light and fluffy in the end and not weighed down and heavy like the Charlotte Tilbury one does. So I just felt like my lashes looked way longer and fluffier on the L'Oreal side. It just gave more of a false lash look. So I do definitely much prefer the L'Oreal one. I think the only thing I'll say about this is when you first get it and it's really, really wet, just make sure to kind of wipe the brush off on the side of the tube a little bit or on a paper towel. I've had this now for a couple of weeks and it definitely gets easier to use and it dries out a little bit So I just wanted to be sure to say that just give this one a couple of weeks and it's perfect Another mascara dupe that I did an entire video on is the highly rated lash extension tubing mascara from Milani It's pretty much an identical dupe for the Thrive mascara. So the Thrive costs $25. The Milani is $13.99 These have similar packaging from the outer color of the tube to the brush inside Side, which is identical and even looking at the ingredient list on both of their websites the first nine ingredients are identical in almost the same order and in that video I showed a side-by-side -side demo with the Thrive on one side and the Milani on the other and I could not tell the difference when I was using them I felt like both formulas were really the same now this tube of Thrive that I have is actually a brand new tube I got it only a few weeks before the Milani one so it's still very wet like the Milani is again you just have to give this one time to dry out like the Thrive one. After several weeks of use, it will dry out and it's not going to be quite as heavy or clumpy on your lashes. So just give it time. In the beginning when it's wet, just make sure to wipe off the brush first to get rid of some of the excess product. But my favorite part about tubing mascaras is just that they last all day. They don't leave those black smudges under your eyes like a lot of other mascaras do. And they come off with just water in the sink. The Milani one removes exactly the same way as the Thrive. So it really truly is a perfect dupe for me. One more mascara dupe that I have is the e.l.f. Lash and Roll versus the Benefit Roller Lash. So I also did an entire video on both of these two. Again, I do feel like this was an intentional dupe on e.l.f.'s part. They made the packaging very similar colors and Lash and Roll sounds very similar to Roller Lash. Also, the brushes are almost exactly the same and they feel very similar going on. I actually, again, prefer the e.l.f. formula to the Benefit just because it doesn't smudge under my eyes and the Benefit one always does. But I love how both of these formulas give you really, really long lashes. And again, I just liked my lashes a little bit better with the e.l.f. formula than I did with Roller Lash. So I think they did an amazing job on this mascara. It's actually the first e.l.f. mascara that I really, truly love. And then another product I talked about in a recent video, but I wanted to mention it again, is the Milani Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush Highlighter in the Luminoso shade. So this is pretty much an exact dupe for Charlotte Tilbury's Peachgasm blush. 
I don't have peach gasm and I tried to get it, but my local store was actually sold out. I do have pink gasm and I have the pillow talk medium shade. And I feel like both of these kind of combined makes the same color as the Milani. But those of you who know the Luminoso Baked Blush from Milani know that it's more of a peachy color. So it makes more sense that they would dupe Peach Gasm rather than Pink Gasm. But either way, combining these two colors, I felt like really gave me the same effect on my cheeks as this Milani one. And I, again, like the Milani better than the Charlotte Tilbury because the Milani one has this like pearly glow that isn't as sparkly as the Charlotte Tilbury. So the Milani one gives me that beautiful glow without enhancing as much texture as the Charlotte Tilbury does. I just feel like it looks a little bit smoother on my cheek area and it gives more of that glow from within sort of look rather than sparkle and glitter like I added something to my cheeks. And I feel like I had the same experience with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter too because this one, while they're obviously duping the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury, I feel like the Hollywood Flawless Filter just has more glitter in the formula or like that sparkle that when you go outside especially you can notice it and the elf one is more of a subtle glow and again just looks like your skin is glowing from within it has more of that pearlized finish versus the glitter or the shimmer so anyway guys those are some amazing drugstore dupes that i found already this year and the year just started so i can't wait to see what's in store for us in 2023 i just have a feeling that this is really going to be the year of dupes when it comes to drugstore makeup because drugstore has been raising their prices and I almost feel like they can justify it more if we're comparing the drugstore product to something high-end that costs a lot more. For example, the e.l.f. lipstick versus the NARS. They increase the price a couple of dollars, but if you compare it to a $34 lipstick and it really performs the same way, you're not as likely to complain about the price going up a couple of dollars. So I think you're definitely gonna see more of this as the year goes on. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate it so much. If you like dupes, I have a bunch of those videos on my channel, so I'll go ahead and pop a playlist right here and you can choose which video you wanna see next if you have some free time. Also, if you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go and I'll see you all in my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.